Uh, so we'll just give an overview of, of the concepts here. So notice that if I go into the sales items, we've got our customers. So our customers are here. And if I was in the business view, by the way, the customers are located in the get paid and paid area and then on uh, the customer view. So oftentimes if we're gonna have a job that we want to track, I'll just give you the quick history on this from the software perspective. In the old uh, software or in the software that's still relevant, but it was the software before in use before QuickBooks Online, the desktop version, they would have the jobs. Now note that you might have a different in termino terminology again, between how you might use a job in a job cost system from a textbook scenario to how you might more specifically use the concept of job or sub customer when or project when you move into uh, the QuickBooks system from a textbook standpoint our, our general idea is that we want to be tracking the job by by job basis for longer or extended extended jobs now from a practical basis within QuickBooks there's a couple ways that you could do that. In the, in the old, uh, it used to be that we have just the, the jobs that, called, that they were called, which QuickBooks Online now calls uh, sub-customers that allow us to track a particular project as a sub to a, to a customer. So we can track that individual uh, job that's kind of related uh, to a customer. Now, they also, QuickBooks Desktop and Online have added other tools such as class tracking which can actually break out income statements uh, based on, and so you could use like a class tracking method in a similar kind of thing to, to break out in essence jobs. So you can kind of add a class, which would be your jobs. That, that might not be the most common way to break it out, but notice class tracking is another way that you can kind of break out uh, your income statement. So, so we've got to think, what tool are you going to be using and then when we get to the online version, they also added tags, which has a similar method of being able to break out, uh, break out items like on the income statement, which isn't, isn't normally what you would do with the job cost system. And then the online version decided to change the name of a job, which on the desktop version to sub customers. So now we can set up a sub customer. So if you were to convert a job cost system where you used jobs on the desktop system, to the online version, the jobs that you had hopefully would convert over into customers. And then the new thing that happened, so jobs from the old version and sub customers are like the same thing. The new thing now, which is I believe only on uh, the online version and not on the desktop version is this concept of the projects. And the projects have some more functionality with it than possibly the sub customer or jobs. So they do a similar thing because they're gonna allow us to track items by job from a job cost system or by project, whatever you wanna call it from a textbook kind of terminology. But now they're using like a different tool to do it. It's in a whole different section than your customer's section up here. Now projects is the new and improved kind of, of thing here. And I think it's only available, uh, like if you have the lower versions of, of the software, you might not have access uh, to it. You have to have like pro or above, I believe to have projects. So if you're below that and you don't wanna pay more, then you might be able to do the same. You might have to use then the sub customers, which you can typically use. And then if you're using the projects, then, then the question is, well, if I have access to the projects and access to the sub contractors, aren't the sub contractors functionality redundant, meaning, why you know how can you use them both at this point in time and one way that you can kind of use them both is you could have like like a sub like a a, a customer and then a sub customer which might be breaking out another sub category such as like a location and then which within the location for this particular custom customer you might then apply your projects to, to them so you've got to be kind of a little bit careful on that. Also, just note that as you pull in your information, if you started from the desktop version and you're converting to online, then I don't believe you can just convert your jobs automatically over to projects directly. I think you're going to have to convert them. They'll convert over to sub customers 
and then you might be able to go from the sub customers to convert them to projects if that's the end goal so it might be a little bit more burdensome than than you first think but you know you may be able to do that but you want to kind of research that process and how exactly you're going to make the conversion if you're going from another software such as the desktop version to the online version and you're using jobs there and you want and you want to use the projects functionality in online okay that said let's first let's do some comparisons between these two things so let's let's look at our customers section i want to see all my customers and i'm going to make a sub customer for jones guitars so here's jones guitars i'm going to make a sub customer which will be kind of tied to jones guitars here and so the way i'm going to do it is i'm going to say i can hit the new button up top and in the new item, I'm just gonna put it the name as the number, 3005. We might have more detail. It might be a sub job for, you know, a project we're gonna build a guitar for them or something, you know, whatever the project's gonna be, but I'm just gonna give it a number uh, for now. So we give it the number and then down here, this is where we have, is it a sub customer, which is similar to a job, basically the same thing as a job on the desktop version. I'm gonna say sub customer for Jones Guitars boom and then it says bill parent customer so if you look at the little questionnaire it'll it'll give you an item but in essence that means it's going to be billed you know through the parent and so you might have this is this is one of those areas where you might use the sub customer in alignment with the projects because you might have the parent being jones guitars and then you might have a sub customer that has a different billing than billing you know jones guitars and that could be your subcategory and then possibly have the projects tied to the subcategory that's one way that you could you might you could see how both of these things might be tied in even though you might be using projects instead of jobs or sub customers as we go here all right so there's that so then i'm gonna so if i save that i'm gonna say save that and then if I scroll down or let, now I'm going, it's going into the, to the job. So I'm going to say, let's go back to just the sales and the customers. And then I scroll down. So there is our sub customer. Now, if I was to make an invoice, I won't actually record it. I can say the invoice is going to go to that sub customer, right? So I can say plus button invoice. I'm not going to actually record anything, but if I just say 3005, then it'll it'll apply it to jones guitars colon the sub customer so the invoice will be going to the sub customer will, which will ultimately be billed to jones guitars so i can track it within uh the sub customer and so i'm going to say do you want to leave without saving i'm going to say yes and then i created another one here so you can do that by going back up and saying new customer again and within new customer I'm just going to say it's going to be 4002 for the name. And then this one I'm going to say is a sub customer for Sam the Guitar Man. And then we're going to say it's, it's going to be billing the parent as well. So pretty easy to set those two up. I'm going to say save it. And then if I go back to my, my customers, now I've got these two sub customers for Jones Guitars and Sam the Guitar Man, and I can apply items to them directly. Now, as we do so, you could say, okay, then I can have reports. If I go to the reports over here and look at my, my reports, there's a profit and loss by customer, for example, that can break out, that'll break out the activity up top uh, as we put the information on a customer by customer kind of basis. And that's one way that we can track this information. Uh, we don't have anything into those sub customers yet, so we don't have any, anything in there at this point in time.